Hello, dark reader, and welcome to the dark side of the library. My name is Katie, and I missed last week on Friday. I'm sure you guys noticed. I came down with COVID. Don't ever get COVID. It sucks. I had all of the terrible symptoms. You might be able to hear it still. Uh, I finally have my voice back. So, finally, I am here to present the book that everybody voted for me to read on Instagram. So, that book is The Old Woman with a Knife. This is by Gu Byon Mo. She is a South Korean writer. Before I continue, I would like to note that a lot of these books you can find on our show notes at darksideofthelibrary.com. Just to note, most of these books are affiliate links, so that just means that we get a few cents if you do decide to purchase the book, if you're interested in it. it has no effect on you whatsoever. It just helps us out, and it continues the podcast so we can keep giving you guys awesome dark reads every single month. Just to note, I want to be completely transparent. Let's talk about this book, though, because it actually is quite good. The Old Woman with a Knife. I want to begin with the actual author. She's kind of an up-and-coming author. She did start writing in 2019. It was her debut novel called Wizard Bakery, and it won the second Changbi Prize for Young Adult Fiction. But she's continued writing. A few of her short stories have gained accolades and awards, and now this book, The Old Woman with a Knife, is an international bestseller. And finally, it has been translated into English. So, what is the summary of this book? Let me tell you. At 65, Hornclaw is beginning to slow down. She lives modestly in a small apartment with only her aging dog, a rescue named Deadweight. Yes, dead weight. And that's just to keep her company. There are expectations for pre people her age that she will retire and live out the rest of her days quietly. But Hornclaw is not like other people. She is an assassin. Double crossers, corporate enemies, cheating spouses. For the past four decades, Hornclaw has killed them all with ruthless efficiency, and the less she's known about her targets, the better, obviously. Never name your chickens. But now, nearing the end of her career, she has just slipped up. An injury leads her to an unexpected connection with a doctor and his family. But emotions for an assassin are a dangerous proposition. As Hornclaw's world closes in, this final chapter in her career may also mark her own bloody end. This book is a sensation in South Korea. It's been translated into English. Uh, the publisher says that this is an electrifying, singular, mordantly funny novel about the expectations imposed on aging bodies and the dramatic ways in which one woman chooses to reclaim her agency. So every time I read a novel, I go through and read some reviews, some crit criticisms of the book. I, I want to kind of get a full spectrum of what people are feeling about this book. And then I like to review it based on my feelings because ultimately that's why we're here. So some of the things that I read were that Hornglaw is one dimensional, that they wanted this book to be this uh like this crazy thriller. You know, we're reading about an assassin. So the premise is an assassin. So they just wanted it to be bloody and gory all throughout. Murder everywhere. But that's not what happens. But as you can tell by reading the summary, that's not what they're proposing anyway. So that was one of the things I wanted to clarify is that this book is actually more of a character analysis, and it's more of a reflection on how society views uh, women aging, honestly, and just ageism in the workforce as well, but definitely focused on women. I do agree with a lot of people where they believe that, oh, well, I wanted to see more about the culture of South Korea because this book is based in South Korea. And to be honest, I couldn't tell. 
And that's fine because this is that just means that this is an issue internationally, right? So that's kind of what my take is, is that even though this isn't necessarily a glimpse into just South Korean problems, this is an issue in the United States, and I think it needs to be addressed. So here are the things that I actually liked. I didn't think Hornclaw was one-dimensional at all. I think it was a great character study. So, like the title insinuates, it sounds hilarious. The old woman with a knife. You know, I have to be honest. I don't take that seriously. Do you take that seriously? But it's a really honest assessment of uh, the world that Hornclaw lives in. Like, her world being a over 60-year-old woman assassin. It's kind of funny because we're learning a little bit about ourselves as a society. We think about a 65-year-old woman assassin and we think, wow, how absurd is that? Whereas we probably wouldn't be as quick to say the same thing if it was a 65-year-old man, per se. So the irony is all within the title and the summary all in itself, and all of our stigmas that we feel is right up front. I like that. I think it's super clever, and it's so easy. I think it's really interesting that people have talked about how Hornclaw's character is like a cliche, but doesn't make sense because she becomes more sentimental as she ages instead of being a stone-cold killer throughout her entire life, and which doesn't make sense to me. How is it that she's a cliche, but she's not making sense? I, I'm just going to disregard that entire critique. So here's my take. The mistake that Hornclaw makes during her mission not only shows the frailty of her age itself, but it is a catalyst into showing Hornclaw's true character. As we age, you know, there's a point where we become really confident about ourselves. You know, we are, hopefully, you know, that's the hope. Like, we become comfortable in our careers, our lives, you've got families, etc., all of these things, and we're confident about it. But then we go through another period of life as we become older where those comforts and that confidence does tend to degrade because we are at our last leg here and we are frail. Uh, things aren't as put together as they used to be. And it kind of draws you back into when you were in a place of not being a confident person and where you weren't really sure where your life was going. And that's the connection that Hornclaw makes so we get this deep dive into kind of her past, her origin story, and how she actually got into the position that she's in in the first place. This is all because she finds this one point of connection with the doctor that she runs into and his family and the feelings that are now being produced. Even sociopaths experience parts of the complexities of emotion. Nobody is just going to be the stone cold killer that just kills all the time. Like, they just, they just don't. In no way do we get the essence that Hornclaw is necessarily like a sociopath either, in my opinion. Like, she does experience human emotion. I think she's just very guarded. Really found... Hornclaw's development, really interesting. How she viewed the world around her at, as a 65-year-old woman, uh, especially assassin, is really interesting. The way that the author summarizes groups of people is also really fascinating. She, it's, very, um, it's very punchy. She's able to kind of explain how we as a society view specific people, it comes off as really harsh, but they're also very true statements. So an example of that, there's a, a couple, there's a fairly long paragraph in this book that's describing two sets of elderly folk. And this is right at the very beginning. This is like page 12. I think it's like the second, uh, let me check. It's like the second page. <laughs> uh, so we talk about different kinds of old people 
One of the things she says is, quote, The only time anyone pays attention to senior citizens on the subway is when they bump into people as they carry a bundle of discarded newspapers scavenged from one end of the train to the other, or because they're decked out in baggy purple polka dot pants and lugging a pungent bundle of ginger and sesame oil, announcing loudly, ouch, my back, until someone offers them a seat. Sometimes it's for the opposite reason. An older woman foregoing the short, permed style common among the elderly and instead boasting straight hair to her waist, sunspots inexpertly concealed with powder and eyeliner drawn with a wavering hand, or even worse, wearing bright red lipstick or a mini skirt suit in pastel colors. The former type of elderly citizen evokes disgust, while the latter is so incongruous that onlookers are mortified. Regardless, both are one of the same, as people don't want to think about them. I mean, just that paragraph alone was just like, oof, ouch. And then it was like, man, what if it's true if we really think about it? So this book has a stereotypical, you know, thriller scene. The end is very bloody, and we've got a lot of those thriller vibes that people are looking for when we're talking about assassins and their lifestyles. But this book is really honestly just a character dissection. It wasn't blatantly dark, but it is vaguely dark, and it's got tons of dark humor. Like, for instance, Hornclaw isn't a assassin. That's not what she goes by. They're actually called disease control specialists, which is kind of hilarious in itself. Plus, there's things like, obviously, we talked about Deadweight, her dog. We have all of these feelings, like she's labeled almost everybody um, in this book, or I don't know if it's their, quote, assassin name, but, like, I feel like it's just Hornclaw <laughs> naming everybody in these, like, really short, ridiculous ways. The way she views the world is very dark, but kind of humorous at the same time, and it's just like, if you're really, if you're a curmudgeon like I am, it it really is, it's, I hold these uh, opinions sometimes near and dear to my heart, where I'm just like, yep, I understand exactly what she's talking about. So, it's not this blatantly bloody dark thing where there's haunted ghosts and ghouls everywhere. We're talking about ageism and we're learning about the stigmas that we have towards the elderly. And these are things that we are all going to be lucky to experience in our lifetimes. But it's interesting that we are the ones that are currently projecting those stigmas now, even though we want to live forever and yet we don't want to deal with some of those things that we have to deal with when we're older. So it actually is kind of a brilliant novel. Um, it can be a little slow. It's less than 300 pages, so it's 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 decent. I think it is paced uh, steadily. It's not like fast, uh, exciting or anything. It's just really methodical. It's it's quite thoughtful, in my opinion, and I I enjoyed it. I would probably give it about a four out of five, but I, again, walked into this book with no expectations. I had no idea what I was reading. I just know what feelings I had when I read the title, and now as I dissect the book itself, even the summary, I'm realizing that all of those things that they talk about in the book are things that even I have as an individual that in and the society we live in, these are all things that we experience day to day. So that's just kind of my small summary of this particular book. I think it's a really unique story. I do enjoy it. I really enjoy um, Hornclaw. I wasn't a huge fan of like the actual plot. I actually preferred the character analysis version of it and Hornclaw's view of the world. It could have, for me, been exclusively that. I was not a huge fan of all of the other stuff going on, like who's trying to fuck Hornclaw over now and who's messing with her mission and making it so she's making these mistakes. I didn't really care for that part and it didn't really feel like 
that part was supposed to be that pivotal anyway. And it wasn't that prominent to me in the book. I was way more focused on Hornclaw and her experiences and how she viewed the world than anything else personally. So those are just my thoughts about the novel. It made me reflect on myself more than I think any other novel has recently. I It made me contemplate how society views women and aging, especially in the workforce. It's a, it's a really very unique novel. I do recommend it. I think it's fun. If you've got some free time and you want to learn about what it's like to be an aging female assassin, uh, definitely give this one a read. It's really cool. So this is The Old Woman with a Knife. This is by Gu Bion Mo. And again, our show notes on our website. They are affiliate links, but they do not affect you in any way whatsoever. Thank you guys also for listening. I know I am really stuffy, pretty muffled. Everything's kind of like to my tone sounds like it's muffled together. So I hope this still inspired you to go check out this awesome novel. For more dark reads, you can come join us on Facebook and Instagram. And we will, I and this will be very soon, uh, get our YouTube channel up and going. I have so many uh, comics and kids books that I want to show you guys because they're just really, really awesome. And they're visual, so YouTube's perfect. Stay tuned every Wednesday for our monthly dark book roundups. All of these are going to be new releases coming out this year. So if you are running out of things to read, don't worry. We've got you covered. Fridays are the days that I like to do mini-sodes and little deep dives of books that I've been reading lately. So make sure to subscribe, to comment, and like. If there's a book you want me to go through, make sure to let us know. And you can do that on Instagram or Facebook or on YouTube or on your favorite listening app. Thank you guys again. Stay safe. Have a creeptastic week. I will talk to you later.